In this video, you're going to learn the truth about how the quality of your shower water, the temperature that you wash your hair at, and the ingredients in your shampoo could be contributing to hair loss. And guys, I'm going to show you exactly how to optimize each of these things to help you improve the overall health of your hair. End of the video, I'm going to be showing you my number one shampoo and conditioner for those suffering with hair loss, so make sure to stay tuned to the very end. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com. In this video, we're going to be exploring how the temperature of your water, tap water quality, and the ingredients in everyday shampoos could be affecting the health of your hair. And guys, most importantly, I'm going to show you exactly how to combat each of these things to give your scalp the optimal environment to grow healthy and strong for healthy hair regrowth. Now, let's get straight into it. First guys, let's look at the water temperature in your shower when you wash your hair. Now I'm not going to lie, everyone loves a hot shower. It feels good, it's relaxing and it's cleansing. But what does hot water do to your scalp and most importantly your hair? It's no secret that hair health is correlated with scalp health. If your scalp is dry, inflamed or has high levels of scalp tension, this would create a less than optimal environment for hair growth. A dry and inflamed scalp will cause brittle hair and ultimately lead to hair follicle miniaturization. Now, using hot water will definitely clean your scalp. Hot water opens up your pores, which helps remove excess dirt, thus helping unclog hair follicles. However, hot water can damage the skin on your scalp. Hot water can cause skin redness as well as drying it out. Not only that, but hot showers can strip the naturally occurring and protective oils from the hair and scalp leaving hair follicles much more vulnerable. A respected dermatologist, Dr. Pilling says, the epidermis has an outside fatty lipid layer for protection. It is what keeps bad water and germs out and good water in and keeps our skin moisturized. And guys, just for the record, the epidermis is the outside layer of the three layers that make up the skin. Dr. Pilling says that when we use hot water, the layer can quite easily melt away, leaving the scalp even more dry. Pilling also says that this layer is naturally replaced. However, in older people, this process is much slower. In other words, we have less tolerance for hot water as we get older. So guys, what's the answer? What is the optimal temperature to be washing our hair with to give it the best possible chance of regrowth? Well, the answer is cold. And I'm talking cold. Let me explain. Cold water helps to invigorate the scalp possibly increasing blood flow and thereby improving the health of the hair follicles. Cold water will also help to close the pores and cuticles, which helps lock moisture into the scalp. Whilst cold water isn't going to directly stop male pattern baldness, using hot water could speed up the rate of hair loss of already vulnerable hair. But what do you do if you hate cold showers? Well, here's our recommendation. Start your shower off with lukewarm water. Definitely not hot and definitely not cold either. This will mean that your scalp and follicles don't become damaged by hot water, but it will still open up the pores and allow them to be properly cleansed. Next, apply your shampoo, and we will cover the best shampoos for hair health shortly, so do stay tuned, and then wash your hair as normal. After washing your hair and rinsing it off with the lukewarm water, you can then condition your hair. Conditioners with natural products like aloe vera in them are optimal now to ensure that the scalp gets properly hydrated. Again, we will touch on the best conditioner shortly, so do stay tuned. You want to use cold water to rinse it off. Whilst it may be uncomfortable, it's kind of like a quick win that you can do every day. Each time you have a shower, you can remind yourself that you are doing something to help get back your healthy hair. That can be very motivating, because remember, whenever you're getting your healthy hair back, consistency is key. So rinsing the conditioner off your scalp with cold water will help hydrate your scalp, improve blood flow, and close the cuticles to ensure moisture is locked in. There are many other potential benefits of cold showers for overall health, such as an improved immune system, reduced inflammation, and giving your skin a healthy glow. Guys, I'm not going to lie, I personally hate cold showers, but I can easily do a 30 second plunge each day and then crack the temperature back up whilst I wash my body. Now guys, before we get into shampoos and conditioners, there is another vital area for hair health the hardness of your water. 
This is something often overlooked by most people, yet it is very important for the health of your hair. Now, typically, clean rainwater is soft and mineral free, but when it lands on the ground, water seeps through rocks and soil and dissolves in minerals. This turns the water into hard water, which means that it has a high level of minerals, and it's typically calcium and magnesium. Now, different areas of each country have different levels of water hardness. If water is harder, that means that there is more mineral content. Now, most people use the water from their shower and they never give it a second thought. However, hard water can leave your hair feeling brittle and dry, which can contribute to hair loss. Essentially, when you combine hot water plus hard water plus chemical laden shampoos, which we'll come to next, you are damaging your scalp and hair over the long term. When you repeatedly make these mistakes, it can leave hair limp, brittle, and vulnerable to falling out. Now, if you already have male pattern baldness, these tips won't stop you from going bald. But if you ignore this stuff, it just makes your hair loss progress faster. So guys, how do you know if your water is hard? Well, the first thing that you can do is check with the city that you live in. A quick Google search should come up with relevant results. You may also wish to call your local government and they should be able to advise you further. Now, the second thing you can do is an at-home test. Simply fill a glass with water and add a few drops of Castile soap. If the water is hard, you'll notice that the soap starts to cloud up because the soap is reacting with the minerals in the water. Soft water, on the other hand, will still appear quite clear. You should use Castile soap for the test because it is free of dyes, perfumes and detergents. So let's say you've done the test or you found out online that you've got hard water. What kind of things can you do to stop it? Well, the first thing that you can do is install a water softener to make sure that the limescale minerals are extracted from the water. Now, water softeners are not cheap. However, they are the most effective way of making water softer. This might be something you wish to do if the water in your area is extremely hard. It's typically something people do when they plan to live in a house for a number of years. Now, another option is to use a water filter. Water filters, they're not particularly expensive and they're definitely not difficult to fit you can easily attach them to your showers. That alone should be enough to make your water considerably softer. They are great value for money, but the results will probably not be as good as installing a full water softener system. Another thing to try as a last resort is using bottled water. It's a bit of an extreme step. However, if you are in an area of very hard water and you don't have access to either a water softener or a filter, this is a feasible option. You can always give this a try and see how it goes for you. Am I saying that using bottled water on your hair is going to make your hair grow back? No. However, guys, hard water can damage your hair. And when there are a number of quick and easy fixes for fixing water hardness, it's worth giving it a shot. Finally, using a conditioner can help rehydrate your scalp after washing your hair in an area of hard water. It will prevent your hair from drying out and becoming brittle. It's best to use a conditioner with natural ingredients that are designed to lock in moisture. Guys, I've linked you to the Hair Guard Biotin Conditioner in the description box below. Now, we only use natural ingredients within the conditioner, such as aloe vera, argan oil, and coconut oil, to help lock in that moisture. This will be a great option for those in a hard water area that need to rehydrate their scalp. Guys, for the final section of this video, we're going to be exploring shampoos, and most importantly, the best practices and the best shampoos for keeping your hair clean whilst also giving it the best chance for regrowth. Now, guys, have you ever washed your hair with the standard shampoos that you get in the supermarket and got that nice foamy feeling? Well, it feels as though your hair is getting a really good cleanse, right? Well, guys, let me tell you about a little secret. The foam that comes from the shampoo is from a chemical called sodium lauryl sulfate. This chemical is extremely bad for our hair. Sodium lauryl sulfate, or SLS, is a harsh detergent that is associated with skin dryness and redness, and almost all shampoos that you can buy in the supermarket do contain SLS. Now, SLS strips the scalp of its vital skin oils. However, that's not the real issue. The real issue is if you're already balding. If SLS penetrates a follicle that has already shed its hair, then the follicle can simply wither away and hair will never grow back again. Now guys, when you use these standard shampoos filled with chemicals, what you're doing is you're trading a short-term foamy feeling for faster hair follicle miniaturization. A short-term gain, long-term pain. Now, the answer to this is simple. Stop using shampoos with sodium lauryl sulfate.
there are many natural shampoos available. However, choosing a shampoo that is designed for those suffering with hair loss is best. The Hair Guard Caffeine Shampoo has all natural ingredients, carefully selected to give your hair the best possible chance of regrowth. The Hair Guard Shampoo uses caffeine to stimulate blood flow amongst other ingredients that are designed to support healthy hair, such as all European, taurine, coconut oil, apple cider vinegar, and peppermint extract. We recommend using the shampoo with the Hair Guard Shampoo Brush. Using a shampoo brush will mean that you can cleanse your scalp gently while stimulating the scalp, improving blood flow, and reducing scalp tension. They are available on Amazon for just a few dollars, and I'll link you to the shampoo brushes in the description. Now, the Hair Guard Shampoo works extremely well with our very own Biotin Conditioner. The Biotin Conditioner, as I mentioned, will help hydrate your scalp, particularly important if you've been making some of the mistakes that we've highlighted in this video. And with the added biotin in this conditioner, this will help strengthen and volumize the hair. Now guys, whether you choose to use the Hair Guard products or not, the important thing is to remember to stop using shampoos that contain sodium lauryl sulfate. The Hair Guard products come with a 180 day money back guarantee. So the best bet for you is to start by giving it a go. If you don't like them, you can get your money back and try something else. And guys, click the video on the screen to learn more about how scalp tension plays a role in hair loss. I'll see you guys in the next video.